Hey everybody, welcome to Geeks Fun Alive. I hope you're all doing extremely well this evening, as it here is here in the UK. The, the 10 seconds, uh, uh, the much shorter timer does catch me out a little bit, I have to admit. I used to press the button, wait for the minute or two for the timer to click down and uh, warm up in the background. But uh, but yeah, so it's always fun and games. But uh, uh, thank you very much to the live audience. There's already a, a good amount of you in here. So thank you very much for coming along and joining us today. I really do appreciate it. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a... A breaking news story certainly here at Geeksvana in relation to a hack that many people have been using on DJI drones, frankly, for many years. Whether you are flying a camera drone or FPV, it's likely you have at the very least heard of the FCC hack or even seen some content out there showing you how to actually do it. We've recently been in contact with two completely separate pilots who are both facing action over their use of the FCC hack. I'm going to be saying the, the FCC hack quite a lot this evening, uh, which in its simplest form, it really, in terms of description, actually helps you to unlock more range, essentially, sometimes up to twice the distance. Today, we're going to take a look at what is actually happening behind these stories. One of the charges itself, so I'm actually going to show you the wording of the charge and discuss the implications of that, as well as taking a look at how they were caught as such in, in certain terms. Before we head into the main topic and hit that head on, let me do the YouTube a bit first and ask my wonderful regulars to hit the like button nice and early, something I ask you to do in a lot of our videos. It does help, I'm told, to the video and the channel, but frankly, it also cheers me up to see the like um, counter climb up a little bit. And of course, it's free to do. If you are new here, if you're watching for the first time, do hit the subscribe button to get drone-focused content notified and sent to you. Um, however, YouTube's handling that kind of thing this particular week. So that's YouTube a bit out of the way. Uh, let me know in the live chat what your thoughts are if you're here for the live show or in the comments below as well if you're watching the replay. I do read all of the comments and we're going to come across the live chat once I've gone through the main part of this story. So first up, and I want to talk through a very brief explanation for those who don't know what the FCC hack is and why many people actually choose to do it. So basically, when a drone manufacturer like DJI releases a product into the wild, they need to get a license to allow the controller to communicate with the drone and transmit data between them. Obviously, there's lots of other users in the frequency ranges, so this is sometimes something which is heavily controlled. Here in the UK, this falls to Ofcom and is actually handled legislation-wise via the Wireless uh, Telegraphy Act uh, 2006. So there's actual legislation in place um, to control this kind of thing. The range of transmission given approval is different in Europe and the USA. The European version, which is also used here in um, the, the UK, is called CE. And the USA version is called FCC, standing, of course, for the Federal Communications Commission. So that's, that's the two names, essentially. If we go across and have a look at the and use the DJI Mini 4 Pro as an example and bring up the specifications for the drone on their website, you can see here that the maximum transmission distance is listed as 20 kilometers for FCC. So that's, of course, in the USA and 10 kilometers for the UK. Now, this is different in terms of the distance leads many people to actually decide that they want to unlock the FCC side of things. So they then do what is what is termed the FCC hack to take advantage of the greater range. Now, as I mentioned before, for many years over countless releases, there's been lots of how to videos explaining how to use the FCC modes, etc. People look to switch across also for many different reasons. There are those who do indeed simply want to fly their drone many miles out. With Those people do exist. So I suppose people being charged for this particular part of the activity will not be their biggest concern because they're already breaking several other um, larger parts of the, um, or arguably larger parts of the legislation. Other people, however, use the FCC hack to improve the signal penetration and overall signal strength. It isn't something that I've personally used before, but that's mainly due to my commercial use of drones and the need to have the correct firmware in place for my insurance and that kind of thing, etc. So all of my drones double up as, uh, as consumer hobby drones, but also um, all of them are working drones as well or are certainly available for, for work. So it isn't simply a case that the only people who move over to the FCC hack are doing so for the dramatic long range flights. 
There are actually more reasons on the FPV side of things, especially for those who are flying in and out of, uh, <laughs> I'm going to use the word bandos, uh, but abandoned buildings and the like where signal penetration can be essential to getting the quad back in one piece or sometimes getting it back at all. So far, although many people realise this was in breach of legislation via the Ofcom regulations, it was almost seen as something, I wouldn't call it necessarily acceptable, but almost going towards that by many people. Hence as well, the sheer number of videos explaining how to switch from CE to FCC, um, especially with the DJI products. It seems we are facing something of a change though in terms of enforcement on this particular subject. And it has been shown within these two very recent cases which have been brought to the attention of Geeksvana by the pilots themselves involved. In my opinion, as police forces understand drones better and how they work in terms of signals, etc., then they're more likely to enforce those rules more stringently. So as they perhaps understand how criminals are using drones and how they might modify those drones, that knowledge trickles down to enforcement against more standard users. It happens in so many walks of life, of course, that way. One thing to stress early on in this story is something that I explain often on Geeksvana in terms of enforcement, one of my little catchwords, as it were, and that's what I actually call the snowball effect. Essentially, someone is found allegedly committing a crime. You'll often find that police or enforcement authorities will actually seek to add as many charges as they can, often brought up through their investigation of the main crime. That is the case in both of these instances. Both pilots are facing serious charges in relation to other aspects of their drone flights and neither are being charged in terms of the FCC hack alone. So as I say, it's, it's, it's basically like a snowball rolling through the snow, picking up more charges as it goes, basically. It's important to stress that as I don't want people imagining the police are hiding in the bushes to enforce this kind of thing alone. Again, I'm not saying they won't either, of course, um, if they find you doing that. So what has happened? It, it, we're not obviously going to be um, identifying or releasing anything which could impact anyone involved, as these are obviously both active cases. But both pilots have reached out to Geeksvana for advice for different reasons, one a few weeks ago and one very, very recently. And as I stated, both cases are current in the legal system, so we need to be very careful in terms of the details. But as it's something I'm hearing from different police forces and that is coming up through obviously different people, um, it's clearly something which is starting to eke into the world of enforcement. So something I thought I needed to bring up on the channel and warn people about, because I'm aware of so many reasons that people use this particular um, uh, hack to bring FCC mode online. Now, in terms of how they got caught, uh, both the first both pilots actually knew of the issue, it wasn't because they were being scanned and that type of thing, although I believe that is technically possible. It was actually a knock at the door from police and their drones then being taken away. So in both instances, it was some form of forensic analysis of the drone itself, including phones and other devices, etc., which actually led to the discovery of the issue. Obviously, once you have that drone in, in, in your hands as police, then it's relatively straightforward if you have some knowledge and experience of drones in terms of finding out um, which which of the modes it's actually set to fly in. In both cases, the initial investigation was focused on and remains focused on much more serious aspects of the drone flight, and both pilots face a list of charges. Um, one, I think it's five, and the other one is four charges. So they're, you know, this is, a, as I say, a snowball effect kind of thing. Now let's take a look at the common parts of the specific charge. Um, I've removed again the, the essential data so that um, we don't identify anybody in that type of thing. Um, and obviously, you know, these are um, confirmed charges in the court system. So equally, these are these are out there in the public domain as such. So it reads, contravene regulations made under Section 45 of the Wireless Telegraphy Act 2006 between, and obviously I've removed the dates and the location there, contravenes um, alternated the drone controller made under section 45 of the Wireless Telegraphy Act 2006 by allowing the drone to fly further distances contrary to section 46 of the Act. So if we actually go across, let me just uh, close those two there and open up our webs page. 
It's just a bit that takes me a second. Bear with me, people. And we can actually see here we, we have the act itself. And if we go down uh, to section 45 and we act, open that one up, and we can see firstly that it is it it pushes the regulation of this area onto Ofcom, um, and um, if I actually bring it down to the correct text, there we go. And as you can see, it basically says here that Ofcom may make regulations prescribing the things that are to be done or not be done in connection with the use of the uh, wireless station or wireless apparatus. And Ofcom obviously mentioned in many of the the, the, the parts of this, um, as you can see there. And then our, if we hop across to section 46, um, it then reads, a person commits an offence if he contravenes regulations made under section 45, or he causes or permits a wireless uh, station or wireless apparatus to be used in contravention of regulations made under that section. And then it talks about here the uh, the fact that obviously that you have the, um, depending on, I suppose, what your level of involvement is deemed to be, you could face a fine of up to a thousand pound or in fact, level five, which on the current scale, um, which I do have opened up here, uh, can actually be unlimited. Um, but again, obviously that would I presume require some some fairly serious evidence of, of some fairly serious wrongdoing um, in terms of this. Um, Ofcom's UAS guidance document, uh, which is this one here, um, this does actually detail in terms of the punishments, etc., as well. Um, and they actually talk about um, it, it. It depends on obviously which level of court is dealing with this, um, but also in terms of where in the UK uh, the offence is actually committed as well. So I assume that there's some differentials there in terms of Scotland and England and Wales. So here we have a very clear and precise charge relating directly to uh, what were in the alleged two instances that we're discussing, DJI consumer drones. So uh, bear in mind as well, these were both mini style drones uh, being altered to fly on FCC mode. Now you can argue that both pilots are facing other charges and this is an add-on, which is absolutely correct. However, one opinion I would offer into that debate is the whole culpability side of things and whether the changes would impact a court in terms of mitigation and sentencing. Could you argue that you didn't know what you were doing with the other charges whilst also showing enough knowledge to use the FCC hack? I'd be interesting to see how that kind of thing would work uh, more in the after system. And of course, all of these people um, are, are absolutely innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. You'll often find as well, actually, that the list of charges changes before it actually comes into court as well. So we, we, we'll have to wait and see um, what happens um, from that point of view. But we will, of course, keep you all fully informed of the outcomes of these cases. So again, um, if you are new here, do hit subscribe for a few future updates on that. So I want to pop across again to have a chat um, with the live chat on this one and see what people are, um, are saying about this. Um, but again, I just want to read the, the charge again, as I did rattle through that rather quickly. Um, so as it states here, uh, the contravene regulations made under Section 45 of the Wireless Telegraphy Act 2006 between the dates as at location removed, contravened or alternated the drone controller made under Section 45 of the Wireless Act by allowing the drone to fl fly further distances contrary to Section 46 of the Wireless Telegraphy Act. So fairly straightforward, really straightforward in terms of what they are saying, in terms of, 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 of what they're looking to do here. And I think that this is something that I've always felt a little bit wary in terms of um, not, not recommending because it's not down to me to recommend or not recommend. I don't really do those kind of videos of how to switch across to FCC modes and things, but it's something which which I've always been a little bit wary of, not because I necessarily believe that there's a major issue here. I don't necessarily believe that the FCC hack is causing, you know, we don't see planes going down or we don't see massive interference with EMS radio or anything else like that. And, and, and we don't see a lot of those issues. And I presume if it was, it's something that would, would have been more ferociously enforced uh, alone. Um, but it is, again, something, if there's ever a possibility that somebody could be prosecuted for something, it's something which I just don't recommend personally. Um, but of course, people can obviously use their use their own judgment um, in terms of what they uh, want to do themselves. Uh, so in the chat here, Ken Leeper, 
is saying mobile phones used to be banned in hospitals for this reason, in inverted commas, yep, until it became obvious they weren't a problem. And, and it's interesting, actually, that as technology has moved forward, it's now that we're starting to see this becoming more enforced. But I do I, I wholeheartedly believe that a chunk of the enforcement side of this is actually because police forces are starting to get used to the fact um, um, of, 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 of what a drone can do, what a drone's supposed to be doing, and that type of thing. I mean, technically, under the existing regulations, you're not even supposed to fly your drone with non-manufacturer or non-manufacturer approved props on there, etc. So it depends on how technical you want to get. Obviously, flying under a different transmission, which has got a specific piece of legislation in place, is more serious than that. Um, but again, it does depend on how how far down the the rabbit hole that you want to 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 go. Uh, Milford, Killian Dawson, good to see you. Hope you're well. Uh, FPV people be like, oh no, um, what's this hack thing? Never heard of that. <laughs> 25 uh, um, MW always. Yeah, indeed. And, and, and that's also where I think part of the issue comes up on this, because as I say, there's many reasons why people use this, especially on the FPV side of things um, that aren't, again, I'm not saying legitimate or anything else like that, but but um, again, you know, we, we're not seeing FPV pilots prosecuted for this on a daily basis either. So this is not something which is going to change the, the, the face of drones. Actually, where I see this becoming an issue, where I see this becoming a hot topic is where uh, camera drone pilots, so people flying things like the Mini 3, the Air 3, etc., who have done the swap for whatever reason, are then actually uh, have their drones taken away, which obviously there's several different ways the police can now seize your drone um, and and your, your phone and equipment around it um, for not a lot of evidence these days, actually, uh, but and, and actually take it away and um, have it um, more forensically analysed. And I think that that's where the problem's going to start coming in, where people have had that and now police forces are starting to look for it. Um, test by Ian. Ian, good to see you. Uh, not how, um, not qu quite how they can prove it on FPV side since you changed the power on the fly. Um, just because the power option is available in the menu doesn't mean you were using it. Um, cars can do 100 miles per hour, etc. Yeah, I exactly. And the um, the act itself, in terms of you know how how it actually happens. And then the Ofcom guidelines for unmanned aircraft. It does lead to the point of saying you really shouldn't be changing things beyond a manufacturer's guidance. But again, I feel like that's more going to affect people on the camera drone side of things. And if you'd agree with that, Ian, because of course, uh, you know, are you changing FPV? You're building the thing from scratch. You're 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 binding the goggles, etc. You're you're attaching antennas. There's there's so much more work. Um, you can tell I watch uh, Joshua Bardwell's uh, show, so I know some of the keywords on FPV at least. Um, but um, yeah, there's so much more to it that you're not really adjusting anything that a manufacturer has made, of course, because you are actually building it basically. So. Um, and yeah, um, um, and Milford, Killian Dawson's there saying 25 MW is the most stupid rule. It actually makes FPV less safe. And as I'm saying, it's sometimes the difference between uh, getting the the drone back or, or or not when you're flying in uh, bandos and and that type of thing. He says trying to be cool. Uh, Chris Hall. It is a limit. Fly within your limits. Just because you want the limit higher doesn't mean it should be. Uh, it is all subjective. I had no idea this even was even a thing. Yeah, and and it's it's something which I haven't done myself before. And I have to say that I think on the camera drone side of things, uh, unless you are looking to fly, you know, very far beyond visual line of sight or have some kind of issue in terms of signals in, in the area that you're flying, I don't think, especially on the more modern drones, I don't think it's actually something that is it, even even required uh, with things like Ocusync 04. Um, uh, Sparky, um, Sparky WS, no one is out there looking for FCC drones. And if they are, um, what are they using to detect this? Yeah, no one's out there looking for it. But do bear in mind that as counter drone technology becomes more and more sophisticated, um, um, they can start to tell basically. But I, I still believe in my heart of hearts, this is a snowball effect type of charge. I don't think they're going to be sitting there um, specifically looking. But again, of course, if counter drone technology is being used in an area and it spots, and I think that might have even been the case in one of these cases, but again, I don't want to talk too much about it um, and, and until it's been in court and until it's at least been, uh, uh, the charge has been confirmed through to court. But 
it, it, to me, I, I, I wonder if the fact that they are detecting that, especially on the camera drone side of things, um, would give them a door in, would give them a window in to actually come across and start to talk to you, etc. cetera. Um, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure how that, how that would work. Uh, Simon Sticklin answering somebody else saying, Herb, the police have said uh, drones, easy to see um, what they're set to, plus onboard flight data on many rigs. Yeah, and of course, people will a lot of the time are using, especially on the camera drone side of things, will be using a third party app and that type of thing. So once they have the drone, once they have the phone, uh, be that a built in controller with a built in screen or whatever, it becomes very, very simple to find out if they if, if the person is using the drone. And of course, remember, here in the UK and in the US, of course, the the fact that you don't know something isn't a defence. Um, um, you know, lack of knowledge isn't going to help you in court, basically. Um, Rob, Rob R, good to see you. Hope you're well. Uh, as long as the transmitter isn't airborne in and in the correct band, um, there is things I can do under under my amateur license. Yeah, it, indeed. Um, and there is actually um, in the section, there is actually a section for that about applying for a specific license uh, for that within the um, the the guide actually from Ofcom, um, which I will actually because that does give a wider. Um, benefit and it didn't seem that complicated or expensive um, so I will actually put a link to that in the description after the show along with the links to the other bits and pieces so people can go and have their deeper dives etc and and see what's happening there um Oh, Gavin, hi, good to see you, Gavin. Hope you're well. I just clicked on you as yours popped up there, actually. Uh, using a higher strength, um, a sh a strength signal to make flight a safer one with less chance of a disconnection is not the same as somebody using it to fly um, a thousand meters. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and that's the thing here, isn't it? It's that, you know, I often hear people saying, oh, I, I like to use FCC because it gives me a better signal and that type of thing. I have to say that I, I have, I fly drones a lot. I have, a, you know, drones sat behind me, et cetera. I fly them for recreational and commercial purposes in the, the countryside, but also in London, in, in, in some of the most heavily congested um, areas of Europe, um, frankly. And I don't have issues in terms of the signal. I do see people on YouTube and I do see other people posting videos um, uh, that have had uh, issues um, but again this is something which is you know contravening le uh, a legislation this is something which is illegal and whereas before I kind of used to stay a little bit more quiet about it because we didn't see any sort of issues um, it, it, it is now being enforced this is something which is being actively enforced um, by um, a, a couple of um, um, medium-sized police forces and it's one of those things that in my opinion once somebody starts using it others start to uh, pay attention to it basically in my opinion so anybody who's, who's joining us late um, I'm just going to pop this up again very quickly so this is the actual uh, charge itself which has been slightly redacted uh, to to ensure that we don't um, 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 impact anybody's cases so contravene regulations made under section 45 of the wireless telegraphy act 2006 uh, between the dates at location um, alternated the drone controller made under section 45 of the act by allowing the drone to fly further distances contrary to section 46 of the wireless act uh, so fairly specific fairly um um detailed really in terms of, of of what they're actually looking to um avoid and as milford is saying here especially for fpv Increased transmission power isn't about going miles. Uh, it's about getting good, clean, low latency feed so you can see where you're going, especially for indoor commercial jobs. And I wonder, as we we are in a um, consultation period, I, I do wonder if there is an opportunity here to be able to discuss this with the the CAA in terms of their contact with Ofcom and that type of thing as well. Because I know that we have... We actually do have, and, and Ofcom has recently had, a an entire study completed, uh, which they published in terms of BV loss and the fact that they're going to be selling off frequencies um, for people, for commercial companies to actually carry out uh, beyond visual line of sight um, uh, flights on a regular basis. So yes, drone deliveries, air taxis, that 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 kind of thing, basically. So it'll be interesting to see if if this kind of thing gets enforced more as those um, come online, whether that's even something which is impacting this, but whether or not there's a conversation that can be had there in terms of um, specifically, especially within FPV. Although, again, 
the, the, where that signal is going to be hitting in terms of the, the penetration, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not in, I'm not entirely sure. As I say, I am not necessarily saying we we are seeing you know planes dropping from the sky or, or, or EMS signals being messed with, etc. Here, um, but it's it's something which um, um, is is there. Yeah, people are seeing ads again. I could tell you a whole story, Droning Vision and Simon, and th thank you, Simon, for, for, let for letting me know, because I do ask our, um, our viewers to let me know. We have mid-roll ads during lives turned off completely. I've just pressed a button which actually specifically bans them for another 10 minutes. We'll, the, the show will be well over by the time that runs out, so you won't see any more ads. Uh, but yes, unfortunately, they've started adding them during during live shows. We do have the option to turn it off. We've done that. Um, and we've got tickets opened with YouTube where they're trying to sort it out. So uh, there we go. Uh, John Burns, um, what you're saying there, Sean, is that delivery drones will use a stronger signal than us hobbyists are allowed to use. Yeah, there is actually specifically um, Ofcom BV loss um, report. Yeah, Spectrum for unmanned aircraft UAS um, systems. Again, I will put this in the description after the show so that you can download it. Um, let me bring it over here so we can pop it up on screen uh, for a moment. Um, and as you see here, yeah, Spectrum for unmanned aircraft system is approached to authorizing uh, the use of radio equipment on UAS. Um, and this was actually released in December 2022, so just about a year ago. And essentially what they're saying here is that unmanned aircraft system, more commonly known as drones, are aerial vehicles that do not carry a human operator, <laughs> the things that we know, um, and that, that it could bring uh, significant innovations to several industries, uh, ultimately delivering benefits to consumers and citizens. In the UK, the CAA is responsible for determining the policy of the use of airspace. And they're basically saying that working with the CAA, government stakeholders and other administrators, we've developed a spectrum licensing framework. This will allow UAS operators to have access to different technologies such as satellite and mobile that could enable them to operate a wider range of services over longer distances. As technology progresses, these devices are becoming increasingly automated and may one day become fully autonomous without the need for a remote pilot. And this statement sets out their decision to introduce a UES operator radio license for drones. And essentially, as I say here, what they've decided in brief, we've decided to introduce a UAS radio license to authorise the use of radio equipment on drones, which will allow uh, BV loss to happen, basically, obviously in partnership with the CAA. So this this is what's coming. And you, you see it dotted throughout the... Uh, the consultation. You also see it in terms of the political side of things with the, the and I don't talk about politics very often on the channel, but uh, this is specifically um, uh, something which is which is um, a link to it. Uh, the the change um, with Baroness Veer moving off, etc., and the, the change in uh, 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 title slightly of the transport minister type person, his first um, um, interview on BBC Radio, uh, he highlighted the fact that future flight, um, carbon footprints, air taxis, etc., is very much his focus, his remit that he's been given um, taking over the role. Now, he has more of a, a general aviation focus, I understand, as well. Um, but yeah, that's very much the focus. We are going to see a lot more of this over the next few years. And I do think, I do remain confident that we're going to carve out an area and an ability for us to be able to fly recreational drones. Um, but I think that we're going to be going through a very mixed period, a very turbulent period um, of, of regulation. And Simon Stickland uh, is just talking about the fines there at the bottom. Uh, yeah, up to £1,000 for this part alone. Um, however, it appears to be part of several bro uh, uh, rules broken by each op. Yes. And just to, to clarify that, that it's actually something which is... Um, sorry, just, somebody else is making me giggle in the comments. So I'll come back to that. Um, but it, it is something which is a snowball effect, essentially, as, as I call it, offence, where um, um, you've been caught doing other naughty things with your drone, allegedly, and then they've seized the drone, they've taken your drone and, and, and phone in, and then they've obviously had a, had a look at it, I say forensically, but it doesn't really take much of a um, an expert to realise what's how it's being used, if there's a third party app, or if, you know, you can find out very quickly within the DJI app as well, if it's um, uh, transmitting in FCC mode. Oli P, um, I, this is the one that made me giggle. I heard the MicroDrone 4.0 was about to be released with the option to boost transmission power, but because this 
of this case and will need modifying. So it may not be out till 2027 now. Yeah, and I'm sure he can blame me for that one as well, can't he? So... Uh, so yeah, so so there we go. That that is the story. That is the update. Um, I wanted everybody to know this and to realise what's actually happening. Um, it, it, it's something, as I say, that isn't something to necessarily. I, I don't know. I, I can't say it's not something to panic over as such or to be overly concerned about. Personally, if I was a camera drone operator, I would think very very long and hard about if I, if I'm if I'm sticking to all of the other regulations. If I'm flying within Velos um, and under 400, uh, 120 meters, four hundred feet, etc. If I'm sticking to all those rules, but then I'm contravening this does it put me out there does it does it make me pop up on counter um, um drone tech uh, is it something that if, if the police do have grounds to take my drone um that i'm going to specifically get in trouble for and that type of thing i don't want to add charges obviously if you're a criminal as some of the people have said in the chat already um uh, yeah no as reptilian research redux is saying no no need for a panic at the disco exactly um if you're already flying uh, in a criminal way, uh, um, far out of line of sight, and again, I'm not saying safe or not safe, etc., just to, in terms of breaking legislation, then this is just another thing that's going to get added, isn't it? So you're probably not going to be too concerned. Um, but I, I do think that there is a clarification point of view from the point of view of the FPV side of things, and perhaps some updates that, that need to happen from that point of view. Um, but again, we're not necessarily seeing this happening on, you know, we're not seeing FPV pilots um, being um, pulled over the coals for this every day, are we basically? So. so there we have it. Thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate um, over 200 of you joining us this evening. It re I really do appreciate it. Um, that is the update. Uh, spread the word far and wide by sharing this video. And I will see you next time on Geeks Varna, um, which will actually be tomorrow. See you soon, guys. Sean out.